so here I am in Beckles in Suffolk. It's absolutely beautiful, very, very quaint, lovely, beautiful village. And we're just about to go into that building over there, which is the bell tower. It's called St. Michael's Parish. So uh, just gonna sort of have a little bit of an explore, uh, look at the graveyards and, and view some interesting history and things about it. So it looks exciting. So I'm going to show you what it's like inside. Detached towers are actually quite rare in East Anglia um, and the Beckles Tower is a distinctive feature of the town and also a well-loved landmark for the whole area. Now they started to build it in 1500 and it took 40 years to build. It is 97 feet in height, 40 feet at its base and it's estimated to weigh around about sort of 3,000 tonnes. Its walls are faced with Roch Abbey stone covering a core of rubble and the interior is faced with Tudor handmade bricks bricks. The walls are over six feet thick at the base and the tower is square in shape with double buttresses at the corners. Adults pay um, what, £2.50 entry fee and children pay £1.50 in entry fee for a little tour. And as you can see um, I'm just uh, walking up the stairs uh, to the bell ringers chamber. The access is by this Newell staircase at the northeast corner and the ascent to the low roof is by three similar flights of stairs. And this is the ringer's chamber. As you can see there, that's where the bell ringers congregate. Ah. I just love the, the noise of the bells ringing um, in the English countryside. It's quite sort of romantic. And as you can see on the walls, they're hanging uh, lots of plaques in memory of bell ringers and other people of importance from the parish. And this is the second floor where uh, the actual the church clock and the computer there is kept. And then on to the belfry uh, where 10 bells hang, weighing six tons in all. And the ten of bell weighs 25 100 weights, which is 2,800 pounds. And there are inscriptions on most of the bells, which sort of give the dates that they left the foundry and the names. Also, they've got some names of church officials on them and other details. And here we're just ascending up to the parapets and now this is a small turret that we're in. Um, it's actually called, uh, locally known as the Elizabethan Pepper Pot. There it is there, just sort of purchased on the side of the parapet. Um, I think it's uh, quite cute and quite pretty with inscribings on it there. And so this is the splendid view that you get of the Waveney Valley. Um, you can see that there's uh, railings pr provided around because of the very low parapet. And here we're just uh, looking towards the south there. The lady's pointing it out there. And this side is north. Now the sea did actually come up to the uh, the bell tower originally so uh, this would have been all of this would have been covered by sea whereas now it's sort of land has been re sort of reclaimed because the sea did actually re retreat um, and now you've got sort of the sea up to low stuff now so as you can see that's the um, flagpole there so as you can see it's fantastic really great views of the Waveney Valley and now we're back down in Beckles Town. As you can see, it's beautiful little quaint streets, really pretty buildings and really pretty architecture here. And we're just driving up to the quayside where plenty of people like to keep their boats. Obviously the lovely little Beckles sign there. Um, so you'll see some boats, uh, the quayside, and you'll just sort of see it's sort of quite a different way of life because everything um, just sort of runs feels like anyway it sort of runs much slower and it's really relaxed so you can see that cute little bridge there it's absolutely beautiful obviously it's a very touristy town because it attracts people from sort of far and wide uh, to visit it, it and this is the centre of the town here now the doomsday survey of 1086 states that Beckles had one church with 24 acres of glebe in the patronage of the abbot of Bury St Edmunds it also mentions a market shared three quarters to the abbot and one quarter to the king and it states that the town had 26 burgesses 
Now, Beckles, therefore, was a town of sort of considerable importance in Saxon days, and it is to be expected that its one church would be a structure worthy of this flourishing town. There is, however, no trace of this Saxon church, which is a bit strange, because in this area we've got Saxon towers, and there's abundance of splendid Norman architecture, and in some churches the whole range of the architectural styles from Saxon through to Norman, early English decorated perpendicular and Tudor can be traced in the one building and now here we are uh, visiting St Michael's Paris Church back to near where the tower is well now we're walking on a creepy graveyard <laughs> with 20 ghosts popping out at you <laughs> <laughs> now heading to the haunted mansion <laughs> oh, <ooh. laughs> look at this massive graveyard incredible doesn't it we're around the back way up so here we are in Beckles at St Michael's Parish Church just having a sort of a look round and come here to visit and have a look at the beautiful Anglican Church here fantastic flint stone as you can see on the building of the church wonderful wonderful stained glass windows and the arches and the turrets, fantastic. Now the church was built uh, during the years 1350 to 1400 by the abbot of Bury St Edmunds and the outside walls are flint set in rubble and they're strengthened by stone flashings at the corners and at the buttresses. Um, and the main part of the church building is in the style known as perpendicular. Now, as you can see, we're just going in the fantastic, absolutely amazing stained glass windows and all the decorations on the walls. Uh, it means it's obviously an absolutely uh, breathtaking building. And the church consists of a nave and two aisles, which continue throughout the whole 150 feet of the building. The width is 60 feet and the roof height is 45 feet. And the church is uh, well lighted by the many windows and, and looking down the length of the nave, um, you're kind of impressed by its dignified simplicity. Now, there was, in fact, a great fire. Um, the interior of the church was completely gutted by a great fire um, in November in 1586. And I just wanted to draw your attention here to the pulpit. You can see it's an octagonal pulpit in Victorian Gothic style and it gives quite a commanding view of the church, providing acoustic advantage to the preacher. So it's really necessary in a spacious church like this. And one charming feature of this church is the uh, the memorials engraved into the flooring here, as you can see, it's written in Latin here. I'm just going to sort of walk down here to give you a sort of bit of um, an overview of what it's like to walk in this charming church. It's absolutely fascinating, just breathes full of history um, and things like this. And then uh, in just a second, we're going to come to the font, which is very large and quite imposing. Um, it's got sort of a certain dignity about it. It's of a, sort of an octagonal shape, just like the pulpit. Um, and it's made out of greenish perfect marble uh, much used during the early English period uh, 1200 to 1300 it's probably the oldest feature of the church and just to give you another overview of what the whole church looks like uh, sort of looking around from the back of the church and the father of Lord Admiral Lord Nelson was the curate here of um, Beckles from 1745 to 1747 and to conclude this tour of St Michael's Church, uh, just to remember that church is not a building, but it's a family. It's a community of people who believe um, and who are able to thank God and, and thank Jesus Christ for his sacrifice for them. So I hope you've enjoyed this video of Beckles. So to start off with, I am slicing one whole mango and I'm going to use my glass in order to extract the peel from the mango in order to sort of get a half of a mango in fully like that without having to chop it up and make a mess. Check out my video on how to peel a mango fast for more details. And then I have one whole avocado here. I'm just sort of squeezing it from the top in like so and just sort of double 
doubly checking that I'm getting all the little extra darker green bits in, just adding the rest of the mango in as well, don't forget that. And then that is some cocoa powder. And I've got some um, coconut milk there, uh, which is obviously dairy free. Uh, so I'm just adding that and a handful of ice. And then that's what your mixture would look like and just switch your blender on like so. Um, so obviously this is a fully vegan recipe and you can in fact visit my website healthylifestyle.recipes for a full list of ingredients and the quantities of each ingredient. Um, it's a fantastic, really sweet, lovely chocolatey milkshake. It's fantastic. You'd never know that there's no sugar and that there's no dairy in there. So don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>